think, honestly, I am still figuring out what the best method for me is and how that's going to look. Let's just riff about a few things. Recently, as I've been going through this Buddhist course, it's been bringing a lot of new insight into just how to meditate and how to meditate effectively. You're trying to hold a meditation object, which is your focus and central focus of meditation, and stay with that focus. It could be emptiness, it could be love, it could be anything and everything. But the idea is, is that you're giving yourself an opportunity to actually continuously and completely stick with what you are focusing on. The difference between continuous and complete being that continuous focus is within each and every moment that you are staying in there as a stretch of time. Whereas complete focus would be that you are fully engaged in each of those moments. But not 70%, not 30%, but like completely. And how I'm seeing that different to how I've been meditating is more of a Vipassana style of meditation, which is kind of this open space, letting everything and every thought just flow through that space and allowing that space to expand as you're kind of going through the movements of your meditation and what your mind is sort of starting to spill out. And while that meditation form has been relatively effective for me, I am noticing how this bit of willpower that's added within the focus of, of the types of meditation I'm trying to do now, it really brings a new layer of control in terms of how that meditation is actually evolving and how your your state and your own internal world is evolving as you're going through the meditations. And what I notice is that as we're focusing on these different aspects, um, which I won't go into detail right now, maybe in a later video, that we are able to really anchor these aspects within ourselves. Something like grounding, for example, if you're really, really focused and really, really staying with grounding, then that attribute digests and absorbs in you in a much more different way than saying having an open Vipassana practice in which things are just sort of flowing through. And that's not to say that that grounding doesn't appear in those Vipassana practices, but it's just a, it's a different way of getting there. And I think this way is more of a shortcut, so to speak, not really a shortcut, but it's a more direct way of getting to that space, as opposed to allowing things to just kind of settle in your mind as if, you know, there's kind of like a syrup of water, which is, I would say, more of a possum sort of practice. And I feel like on the other side of this is, as we are doing these practices of grounding and attuning and, and kind of adding our willpower into it, what I'm noticing is that it is able to dissolve material in a way that maybe the Vipassana practice haven't been able to do in the same sort of way. And, you know, fundamentally what is the difference is that these are hitting spaces of psychological development, which are crucial for our development as human beings. As we grow as children, there's stages of development that we have to go through to, to develop a sense of safety and trust and, and really like belonging within the world. And I feel like these sorts of meditations are really hitting those key notes to be able to build that level of functionality, which especially within my own childhood wasn't necessarily there. And I think through these practices, we're really hitting these layers that, that don't get hit in a lot of different practices. I'm finding it very effective. I'm finding it very, very useful to be doing practice in this sort of way and to be doing it within a community of people that is adeptly aware of you know these sorts of things as well and and so the growth that i'm seeing the questions the conversations and you know the the spectrum of people that exist within this space is is really magical and and i think it's really the community aspect that feels like is driving me to continue with certain practices it's been more difficult to stick to them whereas knowing that there's a there's sort of a backing of not only the teachers and the facilitators but like also this really diverse community 
that is coming together and and we're linking that into the meditations of really making it a ingrained part of the practices that we're doing which is helping me in the sense of not only individually that I care about these practices, that these things sort of reflect a lot of my own path in the past, but then are also in tandem and, and simultaneously happening with all of these other people who also care about these sorts of practices and, and learnings. So I think all of these things together are changing my understanding of what meditation can actually look like, including that psychology developmental piece, including the, the Buddhism sort of mythological pieces, as well as the community piece of which I think really these practices were meant to be done in community. Healing was meant to be done in community. Losing that is a, is a huge loss to, to think that we can just do this individually is not actually reasonable because that's not how we function as humans and i think again something that's been missing in a lot of spaces today that's just one quick ramble of what's been going on thank you for watching this video hopefully you enjoyed it and gained some value from it if you're interested in booking a call with me to learn how to tap into your intuition and to resolve trauma then please go see my website book a call let's have a conversation and get to know each other a bit and see if it's the right fit. And if it's not, then let's figure out how we can help you find the understanding that you need to progress in your life. Anyways, talk to you soon.